the nightly business report good evening tonight the cabinet of ministers approved visa free entry to sri lanka for citizens of 35 countries including key nations in the europe and middle east sri lanka's export income exceeds 9 billion us dollars in the first 6 months of this year with investment agreements totaling approximately 800 million dollars Following a partial rebound yesterday, the Colombo Stock Exchange failed to maintain an upward trajectory and closed today's training session with losses. China opens up an anti-subsidiary probe into imported dairy products from the European Union, stepping up the tensions with the bloc. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved visa-free entry to Sri Lanka for citizens of 35 countries, including the United Kingdom, United States, Canada and several European and Gulf nations. However, the Sri Lankan e-visa system remains disrupted due to a court-mandated suspension of VFS Global Visa contract. According to responsible authorities, efforts to restore the e-visa system are ongoing. On the 25th of this year the cabinet approved the establishment of a special committee to study methods used by other countries for issuing visa free tourist visas and to submit recommendations. Accordingly the appointed committee has reviewed practices in eight countries that compete with Sri Lanka in the tourism sector and presented a detailed report. This report was submitted to the president for the cabinet's consideration. Based on the committee's recommendations, the cabinet has decided to approve visa free entry for up to 35 identified countries for a period of 30 days. This new visa fee policy will be in effect from the 1st of October this year and will remain in effect for a period of 6 months. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri also conveyed in a Twitter post that the country will give visa free entry to 35 countries. This efforts follow as Sri Lanka is in the process of boosting tourists as the country recovers from a currency crisis. These countries to be offered visa free access to Sri Lanka include key nations like the United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Germany, Australia, Saudi Arabia, China, India, Russia, South Korea and Japan. State Minister for Investment Promotion Delum Amunagana announced that Sri Lanka has secured an export income of 9 billion US dollars in the first 6 months of this year. He also highlighted that investment agreements totaling approximately 800 million dollars have been signed during the same period. State Minister Amunugama shared this information at a press briefing titled Two Years of Progress and Advancements held at the Presidential Media Centre yesterday. He stated that the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka currently facilitates 15 investment zones with 1,575 companies operating within them, providing employment to over 500,000 people. Moreover, he added that under the government's new investment program, seven additional investment zones are planned for areas including Monkulam, Paranthan, Kankasanthure, Trincomalee, Iranavila, Hambathota and Bingiria. Meanwhile, as per provisional data released by the Sri Lanka Customs, the merchandise export performance in July 2024, which is last month, amounted to 1087.6 million US dollars, recording an increase of 6.58% compared to the same period last year. This was mainly due to the increase in earnings from export of apparel and textiles, tea, coconut-based products, spices and concentrates and seafood. Furthermore, export performances in the last month increased by 0.98% compared to the June 2024. Total exports for last month including both merchandise and services were recorded at 1380.84 million US dollars increasing 8.53% over the corresponding period last year. Sri Lanka is in the process of establishing its most attractive logistic hub targeting heavy industries with a aim to abstract up to 1.5 billion dollars investment. This statement was also made by Minister Dilum Amunagama at yesterday's press conference. The 600 acre investment zone in Trincomalee's Kapalthore will connect sea, air and railway cargo freights and it will be the second such hub after Hambantota investment zone near a Chinese mill port. Minister Munugama told that Kapalthore is being developed as a new zone in 600 acres connecting to the port. He stated that it will be a logistics hub and it will only be used for heavy industries making it an industrial park. He added that they are thinking that this will be the most attractive zone where they can have sea, air and rail cargo transportation from Trincomalee. The investment expectation is 1.5 billion dollars. Last year Sri Lanka's president Ranil Wickremesinghe and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi discussed developing an energy hub in the Trincomalee district. Sri Lanka is one of the mineral resource richest districts in Sri Lanka. 
Dr. Nandala Vira Singha, the Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, has been awarded a prestigious A grade in Global Finances 2024 Central Banker Report Cards. This top tier recognition places Dr. Vira Singha among the elite Central Bank governors worldwide, acknowledging his exceptional leadership and strategic acumen in steering Sri Lanka's economy through turbulent times. The A grade is a testament to Dr. Vira Singha's outstanding performance in a critical area such as inflation management, economic growth, currency stability, and interest rate control. His effective policies and decisive actions have been pivotal in maintaining economic stability during a period marked by significant global and local changes. Let's take a short break now. Updates from the stock market right out of this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. After a partial recovery yesterday, the Colombo Stock Exchange was unable to sustain a positive trend and ended today's trading session with losses. The All Share Price Index mirrored its previous day's declines, while the S&P SL20 Index, where shown gains yesterday, also recorded losses today. For a summary of today's market performance, we now turn to Diraja Pereira from Capital Alliance Securities. Yes, Sanuvi. Now, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a negative note compared to the previous trading session, closing at 11,458.05 points, marking a 24-point decrease from the previous session. The SL20 index also experienced a decline, dropping 16 points to end the day at 3,286 points. Market activity for the day was subdued, with participants taking a cautious approach in anticipation of the elections. Now the turnover for the day stood at 797 million rupees with foreign purchases amounting to 37 million rupees and foreign sales at 21 million rupees. Notable institutional engagement was observed in blue chip counters with crossings recorded in Commercial Bank PLC, Dialogue Axiata, Kalani Tires, Haddon National Bank and John Kills Holdings. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing Non-Voting, Blue Diamonds, Mullers, Abico Insurance and SoftLogic Finance. The top five losers for the day were Sarodhi Development Finance, Renuka Foods Non-Voting, Singham Hospitals, Equity 2 Plus and Cooperative Insurance. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka recently released the data of the Purchasing Management Index for the month of July this year. To get the detailed insights of how the PMI behaved during the previous month, we now join with Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. In July 2024, Sri Lanka's Purchasing Managers Index, also known as the PMI, recorded steep expansions in index values in both the manufacturing and service sectors. The PMI for manufacturing recorded an index of 59.5, indicating an expansion of activities across the manufacturing sector, and all the sub-indices contributed positively to the improvements to the PMI and recorded indices above the neutral threshold. The increase in new orders was driven by the manufacturing of textiles and apparels, and production increased during the month, mainly due to improved performance in the manufacturing of food and beverages and the textiles and apparel sectors. Employment also turned positive in June, largely because of the manufacturing of textiles and apparel, and the stock of purchases expanded as a result of the increased demand for materials. The expectations of manufacturing activities remain positive for the next three months, as continuous improvements in demand are expected. Similarly, the PMI for the services sector reflected by the Business Activity Index displayed a significant expansion in service activities in July, recording, a value of seven, in, recording an index value of 71.1, the highest value recorded so far this year. The expansion in business activities was driven by improvements observed across most sectors, and business activities in transportation services grew mainly due to improvements observed in freight and aviation sectors, while business activities in wholesale and retail trade and also other personal services experienced growth during the month. Accommodation, food and beverage services, which had shown a subdued performance in previous months, also experienced improvements because of the increase in tourist arrivals, 
and new businesses increased in July, largely due to increases in financial and transportation service activities. However, employment declined in July despite new recruitments made by several companies. The business activities for the next three months are expected to continue to improve at a higher rate, and this is largely supported by favorable macroeconomic conditions. Gold prices fell from record highs in Asia trade today as a rally in the yellow metal cooled, with market focus remaining on U.S. interest rates cuts and brewing fears of a recession. Spot gold fell 0.5% to $2,500.55 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December fell 0.4% to $2,547.05 an ounce. Spot gold hit a peak of $2,532.05 an ounce yesterday. The yellow metal surged to record highs this week amid growing convictions that the Federal Reserve will begin cutting rates in September, but a mix of profit-taking and a rebound in dollar pulled gold off its peaks today. Oil prices edged lower for a fifth session today as investors worried about the global demand outlook. However, a decline in U.S. fuel inventories limited declines. Brent crude futures slipped two cents to $76.03 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell 13 cents to trade at $71.80. Prices have plunged following a report on revised U.S. employment statistics, which revealed fewer jobs were added in 2024 than previously reported. This decline was also influenced by weak economic data from China, the world's second largest economy and largest oil importer, released last week. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated further against the US dollar today. The buying rate for the US dollar has risen from 295 rupees and 20 cents to 295 rupees and 72 cents, and the selling rate has increased from 304 rupees and 45 cents to 305 and 04 cents. Let's now have a look at how the rupee behaved against other global currencies. A short break now, this is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Marga Engineering Private Limited has been awarded the contract to improve the access roads for the Kandy Multimodal Transport Terminal Development Project as approved by Sri Lanka's Cabinet. The World Bank is funding the Greater Kandy City co-development project named Visal Mahanuara with a substantial loan of 30 billion rupees. This initiative aims to alleviate congestion in the city of Kandy by upgrading infrastructure and enhancing overall urban mobility. As part of this project, the access roads leading to the new terminal require significant rehabilitation and improvement to ensure they meet the project's demands. In preparation for these enhancements, a local competitive bidding procedure was conducted, inviting bids from various contractors. Ten bids were submitted for consideration. Following a thorough review by the Standing Procurement Committee, the Cabinet has approved the recommendation to award the contract to Marga Engineering Private Limited. This decision reflects confidence in Marga Engineering's ability to execute the necessary roadworks efficiently and effectively. The highly anticipated Sri Lanka Trade Fair Dubai 2024, a platform designed to foster business growth and international trade between Sri Lanka and the Gulf region, is set to take place on the 2nd and 3rd November. The event has garnered the full backing of the Sri Lankan Embassy in the UAE, the Consulate General of Sri Lanka in Dubai and Chamber of Commerce across the UAE and other Gulf countries. The Sri Lanka Trade Fair Dubai 2024 will showcase the best of Sri Lankan products, services and innovations, providing a critical platform for Sri Lankan businesses to connect with well over 15,000 buyers, investors and partners from across the Gulf region and beyond. 
the Sri Lanka Trade Fair Dubai 2024 will feature a range of activities, including over 100 booths showcasing a diverse array of Sri Lankan products and services, networking sessions with industry leaders, potential investors and key decision-makers from the Gulf region, and a series of seminars and panel discussions on topics relevant to trade, investment and economic cooperation between Sri Lanka and the Gulf. Additionally, there will be a cultural show highlighting Sri Lanka's rich heritage. The event is organized by Pixel Advertising Solutions in collaboration with Globo Asia, a leading event management company based in the UAE, and key partners including the Sri Lankan Embassy in the UAE, the Consulate General of Sri Lanka in Dubai, and various chambers of commerce across the Gulf. TFCC Bank has forged a strategic alliance with MintPay to introduce unique payment options for debit card holders such as Buy Now, Pay Later and Pay Now feature, a feature not commonly found in the market. By integrating DFCC Bank's internet payment gateway with MintPay, they are set to revolutionize the financial landscape, enhancing financial flexibility for all debit card holders. DFCC will thus be able to provide attractive options for BNPL to their debit card holders, while MintPay will benefit from leveraging their bank's internet payment gateway and extensive acceptance network. Accordingly, any debit card holder now has the option to pay now or BNPL and spread their purchase cost into three interest-free installments for all online and in-store purchases via MintPay. Prime Lands Residencies PLC has once again demonstrated excellence as a digital innovator clinching two prestigious awards for the Grand Ward Players at the 14th Best Web.LK 2024 competition, organized by LK Domain Registry held recently. The website of ultra-luxurious condominiums secured the Gold Award for Best Mobile User Experience Corporate Website and the Silver Award for Best Corporate Website reinforcing the company's ability to deliver an exceptional online experience for their customers across all platforms. The accolades were presented to officials of Prime Lands Residences PLC at a gala event held recently at the Cinnamon Grand Hotel, where leading digital innovators and visionaries gathered to celebrate technological excellence. The digital evolution perfectly aligns with Prime Lands Residency PLC's commitment to emerging luxury with state-of-the-art technology. The dual honours align with Prime Residence's priority pillars of technological innovation and customer experience enhancement. It showcases the company's commitment to leverage technology for convenience, offers seamless interactions and innovative solutions that enhance customer satisfaction. In a strategic move to position Sri Lanka as a regional center of excellence for financial technology, a national body fintech forum, Sri Lanka was established recently and registered as an association. This initiative is the result of a major collaboration among fintech companies, banks, non-banking financial institutions in Sri Lanka and Lanka Pay. The forum aims to represent and advocate the interest of the fintech industry in Sri Lanka, engaging with diverse stakeholders including the central bank, other government institutes, international fintech associations and agencies. The association also intends to foster an environment conducive to the exchange of ideas, experiences and knowledge while facilitating network opportunities and encouraging the formation of mutually beneficial partnerships among its members. Let's take a short commercial break. This is an IQ Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today amid increased optimism over lowered US interest rates, but overall gains were limited as a downward revision in payrolls data spoke markets. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Topix indexes were the best performers in Asia, rising 0.8% and 0.4% respectively. China Shanghai Shen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite indexes fell around 0.3% and 0.1% respectively, with sentiment towards the country showing little signs of improvement. Movement. A rebound in heavyweight technology and e-commerce stocks helped Hong Kong Shangsheng index rise, although the index was nursing steep losses from the prior season.
U.S. stocks advanced after investors passed a steep downward revision in payrolls and the release of the minutes from the most recent meeting of the Federal Reserve, which cemented expectations for a September rate cut. U.S. stocks ended higher on Wednesday as investors parsed updated labor data and minutes from the Federal Reserve's latest meeting. The Dow rose marginally, the S&P 500 added more than four-tenths of a percent, and the Nasdaq climbed nearly six-tenths. Minutes from the central bank's July meeting show Fed officials were already strongly leaning toward a rate cut at their next policy meeting in mid-September. And payrolls data from the Labor Department for the 12 months through March was revised down by 818,000. It was the steepest preliminary downward revision since the global financial crisis, suggesting the softening in the labor market could be more pronounced than previously assumed. How that plays into interest rate policy may be clearer on Friday when Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaks from the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. A slew of retailers saw big stock moves Wednesday. Target surged more than 11 percent after it raised its 2024 profit forecast and posted its first quarterly increase in same-store sales in over a year. TJ Maxx parent TJX rose more than 6 percent after the discount retailer lifted its annual profit forecast. And on the flip side, shares of Macy's slid nearly 13 percent after the department store chain lowered its annual net sales forecast. China opened an anti-subsidy probe in imported dairy products from the European Union, stepping up tensions with the bloc a day after Brussels published its revised tariff plan for China-made electric vehicles. Trade tensions between China and the European Union rose once more on Wednesday. <coughs> Beijing announced it would open an anti-subsidy probe into imported dairy products from the EU. It comes a day after Brussels published its revised tariff plan for China-made electric vehicles. The EU said Tuesday it would impose duties on imports of Chinese EVs to 36.3%, slightly down from initial plans. Beijing had called on Brussels to abandon the plans and vowed to take all necessary measures to protect the country's firms. China's anti-subsidy investigation of dairy will focus on various types of cheeses, milks and creams aimed for human consumption. Beijing said it would examine 20 subsidy schemes from across the EU. Ireland is by far the bloc's biggest exporter of dairy products to China, having sold $461 million worth of goods to the country last year. Data shows the EU was China's second largest source of dairy products in 2023. The EU exported $1.84 billion in dairy products to China last year, according to official data. China already launched an anti-dumping probe into imports of EU pork in June in retaliation against the EV tariffs. Ford Motors said it was killing a planned three-row electric SUV and pushing back a new electric version of its best-selling pickup, the F-150, the latest delay by the US automaker as it focuses on cutting costs to stimulate demand. Ford announced more cost-cutting measures on Wednesday as its EV unit continues to bleed. It's now scrapping plans for a three-row electric SUV and pushing back a new electric version of the F-150, its best-selling pickup. Consumer concerns around pricing and charging infrastructure have slowed demand for EVs, prompting several automakers, including GM and Tesla, to delay or cancel new models or slash prices. Ford's near-term strategy will now shift to a focus on hybrids. The company will also double down on areas where it currently remains strong, pickup trucks and commercial vehicles. But EVs are still a long-term goal. Ford says its Ohio plant will start production on an electric commercial van in 2026. CEO Jim Farley has also said he's staking the company's future on a specialized team in California that's been developing an architecture for affordable EVs. The first vehicle based on that new technology will be a mid-size electric pickup released in 2027. That marks the end of today's bulletin of the Nightly Business Report. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the business world. Until then, I'm Sonia Mudanayaka. Thank you for watching and have a good night.